International students begin arriving in Australia. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because this is going to be an interesting one. International students arrive in Australia after nine months of the lockdown. Now, this is something we've all been watching from a property perspective because international students play a significant role in the demand for property here. A lot of them rent out rooms. A lot of them live in property here that their parents may have bought for them while they're studying here in Australia. I mean, I wish my parents could have bought a property for me. I mean, I was happy enough where they chucked the bit. You know, my father would chuck a little bit of money at me to help with the rent from his tips he got when he was driving a cab back when I was living by myself. So, you know, awesome parents. But that I doubt would have such a significant impact on the property prices as a lot of the international students. It's something we don't, we tend to, well, some players tend to downplay, but it does have an impact on property. And of course, they're coming back. They're coming back. So so people can't even go from some states to another in Australia. The Australians, and we'll look at this soon, trapped overseas, having to pay tens of thousands of dollars to try and get back in the country. But now for the second time, I think it happened in South Australia already, international students are starting to come back in Australia. So what do you think is more important to our glorious leaders? Is it the citizens stranded overseas who can't get home? Maybe the young family that was on holiday. Let's, let's emotion it up. You know, you know, the young child cry, the young, oh, the young newlywed couple on holiday that can't get back. Or the international students that can help keep the property and higher education Ponzi going. What do you reckon? What do you think? This is showing us right here, everyone. So a flight from Singapore that touched down in Darwin this morning signals a major change in Australia's locked down, locked down international border. So does that mean it's going to be easier for everyone else to get home? That's the question. The first international students to arrive in Australia since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic have landed in Darwin, signaling another change in the country's lockdown border. I mean, you've got to feel sorry for these guys coming over here. This, oh, I mean, it'd be a nightmare. Students from China, Hong Kong, Japan, Vietnam and Indonesia have arrived at Darwin International Airport on a charter Silk Air flight from Singapore as part of a pilot program to return international tourists to Australia. Well, it's not about international tourists, they're international students, that's, that's different. The education sector is dependent on them. A lot of our universities just depend on the funding. And frankly, I would, I would you know, I'll bet a carton that a lot of them aren't getting value for money. I, I remember sitting next to some international students back in the architecture days when I was studying at QT, and they were just you know, telling me how much they were paying for the course. It was insane really and and we had one lecturer he would just you do the same lecturers lectures again and again and again and this he's turning he look at this rubbish i'm paying ten thousand dollars for this and it's the same as we got last semester i felt sorry for the guy charles darwin university is the first australian university to welcome back international students under the program after hard border restrictions were put in place nine months ago on the 20th of march 63 students who landed this morning were able to be transferred straight to the Howard Springs quarantine facility east of Darwin for 14 days of quarantine, the ABC reported. The students had to take a COVID-19 swab test and send the results to Charles Darwin University 72 hours before their flight. All students had to wear face masks or other personal protective equipment during the flight. I mean, okay, I guess that the thing, are you wearing an actual mask that's rated so you know a, a, a paint stripping mask so you can't breathe anything in because it's all recycled air isn't it? it's kind of a kind of a pointless activity in a plane it's pointless in the office too it gives you a false sense of security i've watched i've watched uh, uh analysis of of you know the impact of just wearing a mask it'll still spread all around with the air conditioning yeah oh well open windows guys that, that'll probably help more can't do it on a plane though they need to fly lower fly lower the students were a mix of new and returning students at the university and were enrolled in a range of undergraduate, postgraduate and PhD programs across law, nursing, IT, accounting, engineering and teaching, the NT News reported. The students are excited to come to the to come or return to the territory to study and CDU is looking forward to welcoming them on campus once they have cleared by the chief health officer. Charles Darwin University Deputy Vice Chancellor of Global Strategy and Advancement, Andrew Everton, told the newspaper so who's paying for their stay in the quarantine facility 
that there's just a question I'll put out to you there. Is the university paying? Or are they having to pay themselves? I, I wonder. I wonder. I, I, I would not be at all shocked. I'd be disappointed. I would not be at all shocked if Charles Darwin University is paying for it. Where then normal people who come over are forced to pay to stay in a hotel. Thousands of dollars. International students contribute an estimated $145 million towards the Northern Territory economy each year. I mean, there you go. There's some nice Donga mining accommodations. Probably fine. They're actually really good accommodation, what you're getting out there. You know, if you go out in the mines, you go out in the regions. Um, you know, it's nothing too bad. We've designed a lot of it. Sure. It's low. Low maintenance. That's the goal. You want it to be low maintenance and robust. Probably a modular wood, a mod wood, plastic wood system down here. The arrival of international students in Darwin marks the first stage of a wider return of international students nationally. There have been more than 100,000 international students waiting for approval to return since February, according to the ABC. Plans to welcome international students back to Adelaide and Canberra in June were put on ice due to the nation's second wave of infections. Their return to the country comes as thousands of Australians stranded overseas plead with the federal government to bring them home. See, this is the problem. I've got no problem with bringing international students back. I mean, it, it, we're dependent on them, guys. And if they want to come here and spend their money on our education and the, the Australian experience, good on them. Let them do it. Sure, it's going to juice up property, but, you know, and, and probably they're not there. With the US dollar dropping, I bet you some of them will head to the US when things calm down over there because Australia's always been seen as the poor man's US. At least that's what all the lecturers at QT used to tell me. The international students who were approved to fly to Australia are part of an exclusive group of foreign travellers who have been allowed to enter the country since international borders were shut. Only New Zealanders have been allowed back in, provided they aren't from a virus hotspot, along with returning Australian citizens, permanent residents, their immediate families, and a small number of exempt professionals. The elite. So let's have a look here at this article from The Guardian. So betrayed and abandoned, DFAT reveals 36,875 Australians are still stranded overseas. And this is only from four days ago. So they're going to all these efforts to bring these international students over. And yet we have so many Australians still stranded overseas. This doesn't look good. The optics are terrible. They are utterly terrible. We've got our priorities. Our priorities are completely messed up. How many of those Australians overseas? Here's the question. How many of them are students? <laughs> How many of them are students that can't get back? Despite Scott Morrison boasting 35,000 have come home since September, officials revealed just 14,000 of those were registered with DFAT. A little more than half the 26,700 Australians stranded overseas in September, who Scott Morrison suggested could come home by Christmas, have returned to Australia, despite the Prime Minister boasting on Thursday that 35,000 Australians have returned home since September. Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade officials revealed that just 14,000 of those were reg registered with the department. That means of the original cohort who had registered by the 18th of September, more than 12,000 Australians are yet to return home. DFAT officials told the COVID-19 Senate Committee on Thursday the number of Australians now registered to return has grown by 36,875, including 8,070 people classed as vulnerable, a number that has doubled since September. The inquiry heard evidence from Australians overseas who said they felt betrayed and abandoned, accusing Morrison of misrepresenting Australia's arrivals policy and airlines of preying on them by continuing to sell tickets to the highest bidder and cancelling flights. Australia had struggled with the number of returning citizens and permanent residents since the National Cabinet capped arrivals to Australia in July in response to the second coronavirus wave in Victoria and suspension of hotel quarantine in Melbourne. On the 18th of September, the cap was raised to 6,000 per week and Morrison said he had hoped that, that those who are looking to come home would be able to do that within months. And I would hope that we can get as many people home, if not all of them, by Christmas. On Thursday, Morrison told reporters from quarantine at his home, the lodge in Canberra, that his guidance of, ho that his guidance of home by Christmas applied to the caseload that we have back in September. We already have got 35,000 home, so we're well on track to deal with the scale of demand that we had at the time, he said. In fact, we've exceeded it in many respects with the number of people that have come back home, but it still looks bad when you're flying over international students and there's still over 30,000 Australians sitting overseas. That's all that matters. That's the optics. That's what's going to get people annoyed. Am I wrong? Does it annoy you? 
Labor's Shadow Affairs Minister Christina Kennelly said while Morrison had uh, blithered asserted the government had exceeded the 26,700 waiting return that is not true. DFAT Deputy Secretary Tony uh, Sheehan defended the government's record arguing that Australians counted for 35,000 figure needed to come home as well. Early in November, Morrison revealed National Cabinet had decided against using alternatives to hotel quarantine because they were deemed unsafe, but pom promised to pursue an Australian's first approach to arrivals in Australia. The Health Minister Greg, Greg Hunt later said the, co the commitment applied only to stopping international students returning, while exemptions for foreign business people and, and investors will continue to apply. Well, it doesn't look like it, does it now, huh? At the hearing, the Australian Border Force Assistant Commissioner, Carly Rendian, said that 89% of the people entering Australia were citizens, permanent residents, or, or automatically approved family members. The remaining 11% received discretionary exemptions because they had critical skills, were here on compassionate grounds, or for national interest reasons. Although Australia was prioritizing Australians in government-facilitated commercial flights, most arrivals occur through normal flights in which airlines make a commercial decision about who is allowed in, she said. Earlier, Dave Jeffries told the inquiry his family had gone to Canada in February to care for his mother, who has cancer, and was left stranded when their return flight in late March was cancelled. Jeffries accused airlines of preying on Australians by charging them for flights that won't run, then taking months to process refunds. Australians had been targeted by social media comments blaming them for remaining overseas, with some more extreme examples even wishing they would ooh, contract the illness. I mean, well, I mean, that's that's just the internet. You're going to get people being idiots. Sadly, that's what it is. Jeffrey said he hoped to raise his son to be more uh, truthful than Morrison, taking a swipe at the Prime Minister for claiming to pers uh, pursue an Australian first policy. There is no queue to reserve a spot in hotel quarantine, and 31,100 non-citizens have arrived in the last six months. We're the only country in the world effectively denying their citizens the right to return to their country. It's unacceptable and about as un-Australian as it gets, or what's Australian anymore. The Australian Human Rights Commission has warned Australia's travel cap may breach international law obligations regarding reunifying children with their families and allowing citizens to travel home. The acting chief medical officer, Paul Kelly, said the cap was the response to a difficult policy conundrum of wanting to protect Australians at home from the pandemic while allowing others to return home. The Liberal Senator, James Patterson, deflected blame to Labor state governments by noting that WA's state cap had contributed to the Jeffreys woes and Australia's overall capacity would have been higher if not for the failures of hotel quarantine in Victoria. Officials said, why don't we just put them all on Christmas Island? Officials said, that between now and Christmas, there were roughly 29,000 seats on commercial flights linked to a place in hotel quarantine, and a further 3,000 might come home using surge capacity from government-facilitated flights into Tasmania at the NT and ACT. Kennelly said Morrison had promised he would get stranded Australians home by Christmas, but this is clearly not happening. Caroline Edwards, the Health Department Associate Secretary, noted the government had secured 500 places per fortnight at Howard Springs, and had very advanced negotiations for a further 500 spots. And it looks like a lot of those, some of those spots are going to international students, hey? What do you think, guys? Are you at all surprised? We're talking about, you know, what can they do to prop up the property market? Just abandon Aussies overseas. I mean, they've already bought their houses. Forget about them. We need those international students to come over with their money. What do you reckon? Kind of sad. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Please like share and subscribe to the channel if you're a fan and want to support the content that i create here there are a few ways you can you can join us on youtube or patreon you can support us using our affiliate links at amazon ebay independent reserve or kucoin you can buy merch from heiser says you can use gold pass from the perth mint or you can support us via paypal take care everyone and i will see you all next time